Now that I've got the enemies working, the next thing I need to do is add collision with them. At the moment the player is able to just jump straight on through them and nothing happens. Now what I will do, first of all, is bring up the enemies so they appear earlier. Just so I can make sure that this is all working correctly. So if we come back into the main game loop, there's a section here which has a comment generate enemies. So this is where I actually create them. And remember I set a condition that they're only created when the score reaches 1500. Now I don't have to jump all that way to test this while I'm uh, setting it up. So I'll just comment this out for now. Make sure that you add the call on here instead so that the code doesn't break. And now when I run this, I'll get an enemy up here straight away. It's not waiting for me to reach 1500. But you can see I'm basically just able to jump straight through them. There's no collision. Now to add in the collision, most of the framework is already there. I'll come down to the end of this section here where I've got a game over check already. And this at the moment is looking for the player's rectangle top going off the bottom of the screen. So basically when the player falls off the bottom of the screen, that's my game over condition. And that one's fine, I'll leave it as is, but I will add a second one. So I'll add a comment to say, check for collision with enemies. And this is just going to use Pygame code. If pygame.sprite.sprite collide, and this is going to check for collision between a sprite and a sprite group. Now the individual sprite is the player, that's jumpy, and the sprite group is going to be the enemy group. Now although there's only going to be one enemy within it at a time, this allows me to check against the group regardless of how many instances are within it. And the last argument I need is the do kill argument. So this can be either set to true or false, and if it's set to true, then it's going to delete the sprite upon collision. So I don't want that to happen, I want it to set to false, so when there is a collision, I can trigger a game over event by just saying game over is equal to true. So now if I run this again and jump up to reach that bird, I should be able to trigger collision. So that worked fine, but you could, if it were quick enough, you would have spotted that there was a bit of a mistake there in that the player didn't actually touch the bird at any point, but game over was detected. So to explain that a little bit, uh, first what I want to do is add the player and the enemy's rectangles on the screen just so it's easier to see what's happening. Now the player rectangle is already there, so he's already got this white rectangle drawn around him, but the bird doesn't have that. So just temporarily, I'm going to set that up underneath this section. You don't need to copy this part down, I'm going to delete this, it's just a temporary, uh, temporarily that's not how you spell it, and let's just say draw enemy rectangle. So this is just going to be the same again, pygame.draw.rect, it's going onto the screen, color is white, and then the rectangle is going to be the enemy, uh, so actually I need to iterate through the enemy group, I'll say for enemy in enemy group, iterate through them, of course there's only going to be one at a time, enemy.rect, that's going to be the rectangle, and I think that's it. Let's try that. Oh, of course, yeah, that just fills it in a solid, so you need to add a line width. So there we go. Now I can see the rectangle for the bird. And you can see there that it kind of essentially just takes the full outline of the image. So there are sections primarily in the corners where it would still register a collision, even though there's no bird there. And that is because this function here by default, it does take another argument, but by default, that argument is set to rectangle collision. So I could specify that and I could change it to something else, but because I haven't done that, it's looking for collision with just the two rectangles. So what I could actually do is get rid of this section just temporarily, because when I do get that collision, the screen fades and you can't really get an idea of seeing what's going on. So let's just get rid of this again temporarily. So I will comment all of this out. No, that's not going to work. Let's leave the if statement, just put a pass in here, and then comment what's below it. Alright, so now when I get a collision, it should just stop. Okay, so I know that uh, I can shut down the game, but I'll be able to see what's going on here, and you can tell that there is a collision detected because the rectangles have overlapped, but the enemy and the player haven't actually made contact. And if I'm careful, I might be able to demonstrate it better. There. So here you can see I have got a game over condition. The rectangles have interacted, they've crossed over, but the enemy and the player are still a little bit far away from each other. Now you could say this is not really a big deal, you could just leave it as it is, 
but it is going to be a bit of a nuisance because there'll be situations where the player maybe if he's moving diagonally he kind of just grazes the rectangle and it will count as a collision and end the game so how do i fix this well like i said this collision check here is based on rectangles only what i could do is expand it further into a more accurate collision method which uses masks so to use that i first of all need to create a mask for the player so let's go up to the player class here and within the init method remember i have sections where i create a rectangle for a player for example so that all is normal and that stays exactly the same but in addition to all of that i also want to create a mask but i don't actually do it within this section here because it has to be constantly generated so i go into my move method and right down the bottom of that move method, just above where I return scroll, but after I've updated the rectangle position, I'll add a little comment to say update mask. And this will be self.mask is equal to pygame.mask from underscore surface. And then the surface is going to be self.image. So it's going to take the image of the player and create a mask from it. A mask is a far more accurate method of doing this collision because it looks at the actual image and the boundaries and all the essentially all the pixels of the image. So the collision itself is or the detection is going to be slower because it has to be more accurate and takes a little bit more time, but it's going to be better for this scenario. So if I go back up to or back down, sorry, to my game loop where I was working on that collision check here, I can now add an additional argument at the end. So after false, I can specify what type of collision I want. By default, this was rectangular collision but now i can say pygame.sprite.collide underscore mask and now it's going to look for mask collision instead so if i run this again and try to mimic what i was getting before you can see here the collision was only detected right at the end once the player and the, the bird have actually inter uh, intersected so previously this kind of collision was detected far earlier when the rectangles came in contact with each other but now it's a lot more accurate and it's waiting for actual pixel collision so this is great, this is far more accurate, but like I said, it's going to be a little bit slower. On a game like this, it doesn't really matter because I have so little going on here, there's only one enemy at a time. However, if you had a busier game with loads of different things to check for collision with, this could slow you down, simply because rather than looking at two rectangles and comparing if they've intersected, it's actually looking at every single pixel in that image. So it takes a lot more time. So what I can do, just to streamline this a little bit, is nest this more accurate collision within the less accurate collision. So this is what I mean by that. First of all, I essentially just do what I had previously. So I say if pygame.sprite.sprite collide, so code is pretty much the same here, jumpy enemy group false, but then I don't add the additional argument at the end. So if you remember what this meant was that the default is going to be rectangular collision. Now, I can't have mass collision without the rectangles first colliding. So this basically says that if we've got that rectangular collision, that's fine. That gives us an initial indication and it's not very accurate. But if that is the case, then look for the more accurate one at that point. So it just means that you don't need to spend resources on this more accurate collision until you have an initial indication with your rectangular collision. So I'll run this again just to test it. I run up here and again you could see that the rectangles would have intersected previously but it waited until the little bandana was actually intersecting with the bird's beak. So this is just an, a neat little way of making sure that your collision is a little bit more optimized but at the same time maintaining accurate pixel collision. Now I just need to make sure that I tidy everything up and put it back to how it was so I want to make sure that this fade counter is back in. So let's uncomment all of that run this again and get this collision detection here okay so that's all back to normal that's working as it was before and i'm able to repeat it so that's all working well and now the other thing is of course those rectangles i only added them in from the beginning pretty much just to be able to visualize what's going on behind the the, the screen there so let's delete this enemy rectangle i don't need that anymore and then the same goes for the player rectangle that's been there pretty much from the beginning uh, if we go up to here, so this is the draw method within the player class. And all I need is this screen.blit section. That's what actually draws the image onto the screen. I don't need this rectangle anymore either. So we can get rid of that one. And it's going to look a lot tidier. There we go. So now everything's a lot cleaner. And we're getting proper collision detection working. 
So that's how you set up collision as well as optimize it to make it more accurate within your game without making things too slow. So if you found this useful, then please do leave a like and thanks for watching.